Hi, it's 2022 and you decided to install and start playing the game League of Legends because of Arcane. Word from a friend who watched Arcane or... Uh, I, Arcane? I can't think of another. Anyway, before we get started, this is your final warning before I start this video. You have two seconds to rethink your decision right now. Okay, to all players that still have League installed, I present you the Beginner's Guide to League of Legends in 2022. When just starting the game, you are presented a tutorial that supposedly teaches you the basics of the game. Except, well, not really. They literally just inform you the bare minimum that you need to understand the game and leave out many essential information out. It's, it's really outdated. It's gonna leave you to learn about a lot of the game mechanics yourself when it's supposed to teach you that. The time it takes to understand all mechanics of League, it's gonna take a long time. Almost as much time as trying to understand all of Pokemon's controversies. So these are tips and tricks that in my opinion should have been given by Riot to new players in the first place in the tutorial. After watching this video, you will understand the do's and don'ts of this game and will be the most prepared person to battle the mental warfare that is Summoner's Rift. Alright, cool, let's move on. The first thing to do after finishing the tutorial in League is to open up the practice tool, load in with any champ, and tweak your settings to best comfort you. Some of the most essential things to do include, so you click Y so your camera is unlocked, this way you can practice your awareness outside your own champion. Number two, open the shop and you go over to this category and you click this button to pin these menus so yeah, you don't have to get frustrated over this. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna punch your computer. Let's move on then. <laughs> Number three, increase your minimap size and shrink your HUD. Trust me, it, it works. It's it's really good. Number four, open the hotkeys menu and manage your quick cast keys. Quick cast skills do not require you to left click to cast the abilities. You can bind separate keys for normal and quick cast in the drop menu so you have the ability to do both. Number five, in this communication tab, find a key and bind one to the it's warded ping so you can shout at your teammates if they are exposed to the public eye. Number six, in player movement there is a key for attack move this makes you attack things that are closest to you and you go to game scroll down and check attack move on cursor this makes it so when you attack move uh, you're gonna attack things that are closest to your cursor it makes it more accurate you can practice this to kite kiting is basically uh, attacking while running away other than these settings, most settings are optional and are toggled on your own responsibility and I'm not liable for the struggles that will come by activating them. Especially show ally chat, or even worse, all chat. Next, search up the simplest champions for each role regardless of meta or patches and play them to get used to laning in each respective roles. If you are familiar with MOBAs, then just pick any champions. But select a few to, you know, get comfortable to try instead of jumping ship every single game. Why am I telling you this? Developing a comfort pick is beneficial and I also keep getting messages from my friends asking if they should get Yasuo, Vayne, or Lee Sin as their first champions. So I might as well answer that here. No, sit down. I'm doing this for your own good. The champion that you should pick up and learn is in fact the best one in the game. Gareth. Third, this is a little special for my ADC or uh, Dragon Lane players for, you know, Wild Rift folks gotta represent. I know there will be games where you're put behind and even though it's not your fault, you didn't play bad and in the result your champion does no damage and dies too fast. And in that moment you might have thought to yourself, what could, what, what, what could have you done? To prevent that. There's nothing you can do about it, suck it up buddy. Number four, the rune system is a blessing ever since it was reworked. So spend the time to understand which runes are the best for your champions. Before a certain level, they are predetermined by the game and you cannot make or edit your own rune pages. Once you are allowed to create your own pages, these small differences in runes can make a significant impact in game. A certain rune setup can be the bread and butter to a champion but absolute garbage to another and will put you at a disadvantage. There are five different trees to pick from and in each rune page you can get to use two trees, a primary and a secondary tree. The primary tree is the only tree where you can pick a keystone rune from and every sub rune within it. And in the secondary tree you can only pick two sub runes out of uh, three lines. To summarize, the yellow tree is usually for duelist fighters and marksmen where you want to hit a lot. Blue tree contains useful subruins for spellcasters, green tree is sustain and tankiness, red tree is pure damage, and the inspiration tree provides rule bending mechanics like going in depth in the sword, free boots, free potion, free bitcoin, and blocking people from stealing your NFTs. Tip number five, use wards. When we spawn and get out of base, we're usually given a warding totem if we have not purchased one already. At first glance, 
Warding for vision, it might not seem very important or useful because it deals no damage, right? Wrong. It can save your life or even help give you vision to set up for a surprise. So use your wards. There are three types of trinket wards which are free to buy and use. At last, there's the vision ward, a 75 gold cost consumable that places down a 4 health ward that will not go invisible but will detect disable and expose nearby wards like a sweeper, but it can't detect wards inside a brush if it isn't in it. So yeah, use wards, they're important. Lastly, there are a few damage types in League, primarily physical, magical, and true damage. Each champion type also has some kind of specific stats they specialize in. For example, a lot of auto attack based marksmen will typically build critical strike items, and burst mages will typically build items with high ability power numbers. Tanks usually counter damage by building armor or magic resistance. When this happens, it's a good idea to spend your gold on some percent armor or magic penetration, not flat magic penetration or lethality because they only reduce the resistances by a flat amount. And yeah, that has been all the basic essential tips I can think of for new players fresh from the tutorial. This game is like, ever evolving and I thought I would put something like this out for season 12 because these videos do tend to get outdated over time as the seasons go by. Hope you enjoyed it and you all know, good luck. I, I salute you for trying out this game, you know. Okay, do the usual, like, 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 subscribe, bell tap, right? Yeah, nice. See ya. Video's over. Goodbye. Fade.